guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete, and guess what? I have something new specifically from Land Rover that I wanna show you. This is it, this is a 2023 Land Rover Defender, but guess what? This is the new, bigger version than ever before. This is the, the Land Rover Defender 130. But before we get into this super size, super off-road capable SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. The Defender, it's been in Land Rover's lineup for decades. That familiar shape, it disappeared from US shores for quite some time, but then it made its triumphant return just a couple short years ago. We already brought you the two-door 90, the Defender 90, that shorter version. We also did the four-door version, the 110. Well, guess what? This is super size and brings a lot of super touches in this 130. What are we talking about? We're talking about a vehicle that now has seating for up to eight people and that three-row capacity in a full-size off-road SUV. Now, there's lots of competition out there. One, though, that I would love to put up against this one is gonna be that Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Both of them have some luxurious trims. Both of them bring three-row seating capability, and both of them are definitely off-road equipped SUVs. So let's go ahead, let's dive into this Defender 130 and see, is it the best new large SUV to buy? Let's go ahead and check it out. Right off the bat, the look. Like I said, you're not gonna confuse this with any other SUV on the market, and I'm absolutely lo loving this off-white color. It's a nice grayish white, really shows the body lines, especially with the black accents. Now, at the front of the business, you're still gonna get that rectangular headlight housing opening, gloss black, and we have the recessed headlights, daytime running lamp, and turn singles that are all LED equipped. Working our way down, you do have functional venting, corner vents, and venting in the front section here. That's gonna help bring cool air for all those heat exchangers. We even have LED fog lamps. Now, the great thing about this Defender is you could raise and lower it with that air adaptive suspension, that air ride suspension. You could go to over 11 inches of ground clearance. This thing will go through about three feet of water. Very close credentials to that Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Now, as we come across the front, another unique shape to the grill. I like the way the top grill, very small, rectangular, elongated, rectangular shape with the Land Rover badge, British Racing Green. Yes, I understand that Land Rover is owned by an Indian company, but this is still built in England, so therefore it's still a British brand Land Rover, British Racing Green. Working your way down, we do have more functionality, flat black, I love the way they hide that forward-facing camera, and then I'm really digging the nice aluminum finish that cleanly wraps underneath the vehicle. Now, as we rise on up, you do have that bold Defender name. Not my favorite how they just put emblems on, but it does pop nicely, especially with this off-white color. We got the nice bulge. Everybody needs some off-road bulge, especially a lot of the guys out there. That gives you that nice bulge. And then you have the accents, the gloss black accents on both sides. All of this style, use the Google, use the interwebs, goes back decades of how this thing looks and how it was designed. Now, as we come around that big flared fender, you gotta go way wide, what do we got here? Very simple wheel design, but I'm digging it. Five spoke wheel design, you got the Defender name stamped in the side. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what the heck is the size of this wheel? 22 inch wheel, massive six piston calipers. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what are the size of these tires? You're looking at 275 on the width, 45 series sidewall. There's our suspension bits. I'm gonna have Steven kind of zoom in and show the upper control arm, the air ride suspension. That's gonna give us tons of ground clearance. Even the way they do the flared fender and the flat black, I'm actually digging it. Normally I want this all painted, but I like the way they gave it a nice off-road look. Now coming down the side, you have functional venting with the Defender name. Even the way that they have the exposed 
windshield wipers. See how everything is painted and you have those exposed windshield wipers? It's got that classic look. And one other thing I wanna point out is the sprayer is actually built into the wiper arm instead of sticking out from the hood or underneath the hood. We got a blacked out A-pillar, side mirrors, and that nice flat roof. Look at the size of this thing. That's what she said. But look at the size of this thing. It actually has that nice long length because we got three rows. You got your turn singles, LED turn singles that have been fogged over and 360 degree cameras. Another nice touch, color match on the door handles. Look at the nice bold body line. There's those smoky, they kind of smoked out the lens on those turn singles. Working our way down the side, you can see for the rear, it's got that nice flared fender look. You got that square area. Remember, you could actually mount utility boxes on the side with that Land Rover badge. It's crazy how long this thing goes. I mean, it, it just goes on and on and on and on, all the way to the rear, and then coming around the back, that nice sharp ed, edge. Look at the way when you come down the fender, it's like, whoop. Love the way they did that classic retro style, but very, very futuristic with the lighting, the Land Rover badge. And then what's a nicer touch is they actually give you this case that encloses the spare tire. So you got the Defender name, the white with the black, you could see from the rear. And then the one that we have, which I'm gonna have Steven kind of swing it around, the one that we have is the Defender P400. There's a P300 and this is the P400. That means we have more horsepower. And then going all the way down, you could see that we have our full tow capability 8,600 pounds worth of towing, and you got massive tow hooks, so you can yank those Grand Wagoneers out of the mud, out of the dirt, but very, very clean under the back end. Let's go ahead, let's pop the hood and talk performance of this Defender 130. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hood struts. You could see the bracing that they did to tie in the firewall to where the shock top mounts are. You could also see the airline and the wires for that adjustability on the suspension. Not a very sexy engine cover. I am gonna zonk it. it I, I need a little bit more. Give me something else than that. But what do we got underneath there? You're basically looking at, like I said, this is the P400 spec version. So what do we have? We have a three liter, three liter straight six. It does have, of course, your power adders, and you're looking at 395 horsepower, 406 pound-feet of torque, zero to 60 in 6.3 seconds, and it is mated to the ZF eight-speed automatic transmission. Like I mentioned earlier, you can tow up to 8,600 pounds, and with this whole setup, you got your all-wheel drive, you got your twin, your twin-speed transfer box, obviously two-speed, transfer box, and then when you're looking at MPGs, 17 in the city, 21 on the highway. But you know what? Why don't we go ahead, let's fire this thing up and see what the Defender 130 looks like in motion. All right, guys, we're inside this 2023 extra long Defender. This is the Defender 130. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I'm looking for a, a big SUV, but I want something different. I want something unique. And this Defender definitely checks off those boxes. My question is, how much is it? Very good question. MSRP for the way that you see this one is right around $95,000. Let's see what you get for the P400 spec Defender 130 to the door panels. Just like other Defenders, they bring the exterior color to the inside, but you'll also notice that nice, soft, tan material. That kind of elevates the luxury feel in here. You got the Meridian Premium sound system, tasteful speaker grill covers, wood trim on that door handle. That's real open pour wood. 
and then down in that pocket, you can easily put a whole plate of bangers and mash and a nice cup of tea to wash it down. Going from the door panel to the dash, same story. They bring the soft touch material with the stitching. You got a nice cubby area here. Easily put, I would say, five British scones. You even have a place where you could get into to run wires and plug in, which is nice. And it's got a nice lid. It even has space behind the infotainment system. And as you can see, the windshield wipers work nicely. The one thing that's a little weird are the AC vents up top. They're kind of strange to kind of direct the air on you, but once you get used to it, you'll be okay. We have the 11.1 PIVI Pro infotainment system. This is that upgraded, updated system. Navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's actually quicker reacting than in the past. You could go into your vehicle dimensions. There's all your readouts there with the Defender. We could go back. What about backup camera? It's smaller, but the good news is the resolution is super clear. You got your 360, you got your trajectory. We could go into off-road, actually get your off-road readout. You could go into towing, get that set up. Look how it has perfectly the alignment for when you're hooking up the trailer so that you can look like an expert instead of like an amateur. And then you're right back to where you started, working your way down. You do have those same multi-function buttons. So you could actually put the ventilated seats on, you could put the heated seats on, and you could adjust temperature all by the press of the button. So there's the heated seats, so you don't think I'm lying to you. And then you're right back. Fan speed, same story. It's all out of the same switch gear. So that kind of simplifies this area. That's gonna control the ZF eight speed automatic transmission. And then deep down with inside, you have a USB-C, USB-A, and a 12 volt. And then you get a nice cubby down here. This is a nice area, like say if you're doing some off-roading and you find some, some rocks that you wanna collect, you can put them down here, or you could put a purse, a purse, a bag, a sack, a satchel. We got a nice little rubbery grip area for you to be able to put your phone so it doesn't slide around. There's your Land Rover key fob, British Racing Green, just like always. Spin it around, all the buttons. Open this up, we got wireless charging and you got you have a refrigerator in your center console. I like the way that opens, look at that. It goes all the way back. Gives you that nice clean access. You could put, I would say, eight Twinkies in here. It's got ambient lighting and you can keep them nice and chilled. Everybody likes a chilled Twinkie on a hot summer day. Close it up, seats. The material so soft. I I'm actually digging the tan interior in here. All the way down, perforated, nice long seat cushion, lower seat cushion, and you have full power adjustments. And then up top, we have this massive, not only panoramic sunroof here, but you also have a sunroof over the third row passengers, which I'll show you once we climb back there. But why don't you come over to the business end? I want to show you behind the wheel of this Land Rover Defender 130. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. You do have three memory seat settings for the driver's seat. There's all your seat controls, just like on the passenger side, easy to get to. I do like the way they have the little bit of silver around those buttons. I'm six feet tall, plenty of room in here, even with the sunroof, steering wheel, nice leather, very unique how they do the materials. And what's interesting on this particular one, it matches the exterior color, which I really like. Stitching, the Defender badge, Nice electric assist up and down with the steering wheel. You got a place for a Granny Smith apple when you want to eat a little healthy. And then you have that digital gauge display with all of the different readouts on it. Makes it easy to scroll through. So we could go right in the info panel. Now you could scroll through all the different readouts, including your off-roading, the clock. You could even have a little picture of a Defender 130 to remind you what yours looks like. Everything else is super clean and a massive head-up display. But let's go ahead. This is the first time I've ever said this. Let's go into the mid-row of this Defender. Right, guys, back seat time. And this is really where the 130 flexes its muscle. And by the way, the beach is that way. Lots of space back here. That's the benefit of having the flat roof is you get tons of space in here. Now, on the backs of the seats, you do have the plastic. Not my favorite, especially in something that costs $95,000, so I'm going to zonk that. And then on top of that, you do have the cargo net. That's another area that is not my favorite. The good news is 
it really expands outward very far. So you could put a couple books in there and that's the best thing. If you're going on an off-road journey or just a journey period with your kids, tell them to leave the damn phones and electronics at home. Bring some books, maybe 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, maybe Beowulf, or if they want something not so hardcore, maybe the Hardy Boys, something like that. But anyways, continuing, you got a nice little command center, AC vents that mimic the ones that are up front. You got your controls, which are really nice, easy to get to. I'm trying to figure out what this is. If these are fake buttons, this should be heated and ventilated seat buttons. But I, like I said, I'm not too sure what the heck is going on here. I got, like I said, plenty of room. And the great news is these seats slide forward and backwards and, of course, also recline. Not too far, but a little. It's better than nothing. And then armrest, that's actually pretty soft. Two cup holders. Let's go ahead. It's time to do it. Let's go on the third row of this Defender 130. All right, guys, third row time. And you know what? Once you get in, it's halfway decent, but I'm gonna zonk. It is a pain to get into this third row. Just something to think about. You can see that my knees are not too high. I do have to admit, I am gonna feel more comfortable in the third row of something like a Grand Wagoneer, but you do have the nice soft touch material. I have my own AC vents, little tiny cargo nets for a Twinkie, and I even have my own sunroof back here, which is nice. A lot of times they forget about that third row passenger, like the peasant that they are sitting in the back. But why don't we go ahead, let's check out what kind of room we have when we fold down the seats in this new Defender 130. All right, guys, we're inside this all new 2023 Land Rover Defender 130. Right away, it's unbelievable how this vehicle drives. It really does. It, it's very smooth. And it also, you know, it, it allows you to have confidence while you're going down the road. You're sitting up nice and high and everything is well within reach. And you're having that unique style and feel to it. Something that you're not gonna get in a lot of SUVs. A lot of SUVs are pretty much cookie cutter. They got their special touches, but this from the outside to the inside and the way that it drives is very, very unique. Now you might think that driving this is gonna be a bear in traffic, but it actually isn't. It's not cumbersome at all. It feels like a Defender 110, to be honest with you. Right, guys, now that we have some open road, it's interesting when you go on throttle because you think like this would be hurting for power, but with it being a P400, you actually have plenty of power. I mean, to be able to tow over 8,000 pounds and you're getting some pretty crisp acceleration it's actually quite stupendous when you think about this not having a V8. But let's go ahead and go on throttle. On throttle, here we go. Nice. Smooth shift from the ZF8 speed automatic. And I'm telling you, this thing has plenty of get up and go, and it's rock solid. I mean, this thing feels like you could drive it through a freaking house. That's how solid it is. Now what's fascinating is that this and the Grand Wagoneer both have a ZF eight speed automatic. Yes, Jeep calls it a torque flight, but it is actually made by ZF. It's just they use that name for their uh, marketing purposes. But I think we need to see how this thing handles and we need to go on throttle. So if you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, here we go. Drops down and we are off and running. On the brakes, you got a nice head up display. Not bad, I mean, you are obviously getting some body roll because of how high up we are and how massive this thing is, but the adaptive air ride suspension does a fabulous job and just all the extra touches in here feels really good and I've always liked the quirky style of the Defender. Definitely different from anything else out on the road very smooth 
Another thing is, when it comes to uh, insulation, not a lot of wind noise, even not a lot of road noise, which is great. So you're getting that as well out of the equation, uh, a nice, serene driving experience. Seats are supportive. The bottom cushion is nice and long for those that have longer legs. And once you get a hand on the multi-function switches, it's actually not a big deal. Brakes feel good. You got those massive six piston calipers, so they're definitely gonna feel good. And then obviously going on throttle, here we go. Quick getaway with three row capacity. Not too bad. But get like I said, get into the infotainment system. Very easy to figure out. Really, they did a great job. I'm very impressed with this vehicle. But we're going to get back to Land Rover St. Pete. Technically, I know it's Jaguar, Land Rover, St. Pete. And wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys. It's been a monster truck kind of day with this 2023 Defender 130. I definitely want to thank Miro, Jeff, and the rest of the crew getting us access to their very first one. Let me know what you think. Are you going to go this route? More rugged appearance. Obviously, when you're looking at what's underneath the hood with that straight six compared to the Grand Wagoneer, which obviously you could still get with a Hemi V8. How are you going to spend your money? Put it in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. We got to give it up to Stephen Flood. Stephen Flood Photography, working that camera like a champ. The reason why I went like this is that in that comment section, let him know what you think about his camera skills. I'm very curious. His life depends on it. But thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.